Hello, how's it going? Welcome to a brand new series. This is F1 Manager 2022. A massive thank you to Frontier Games uh, for the early review code, um, meaning that I'm able to play this game uh, nice and early and record tons of content for you guys. Uh, I'm Joe, if you're new around here, make sure you click that subscribe button for daily sports and retro gaming content, in particular F1 management content. We are going to be doing daily content on this series for as long as you guys want to see it. So if we could hit 50 likes on this first video, that would be amazing. It is going to be an Aston Martin road to glory. Now, I have already attempted to uh, record this video once um, and didn't have the desktop audio playing so we're going to do it again uh, and without further ado let's get into the action uh, just a quick disclaimer this is played before the day one patch so there might be a couple of little issues uh, here or there that we come across but um, it's a, a very very smooth looking game so far and with that being said let's go for it formula one a sport that spans hearts, minds and nations, where the 20 best drivers in the world come together to take on some of the world's most historic circuits. And that legacy continues today. The 2021 championship was thrilling from start to finish, and 2022 is set to be even better. New regulations will usher in an age of pioneering changes, New driving talent alongside returning champions will be dueling it out to the bitter end. The pressure will be on the team principals in the upcoming season as they manage their drivers, their cars and the whole team to push to victory. This is not a challenge for the faint-hearted. This is Formula One. Okay, so here we are then in game and uh, we Mercedes have returned to f1 in 2010 and since 20 a few options of course constructors championships back to back every year in 2021 they took home the constructors championship once more although they narrowly missed out on the drivers championship coming in second heading into 2022 mercedes will insist on dominating the competition nothing less than the fastest car and the most wins will give the silver arrows the outcome they want to see at the end of this new season and beyond. So what I want this uh, part one to be is kind of everybody's first experience of the game. Um, you know, I, I, I like to play through games slowly, detailed. You know, we're not going to rush straight into the first race. Um, we're going to take our time with it and uh, we'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, David Croft is going to give it a sort of little uh, summary of each of the, the teams so we'll look through that we'll look through some of their their details and you can see straight away third best car uh, is mercedes but they've got the uh, the best performance of drivers staff performance third of 10 uh, headquarters second of 10 um and you can see all of the the different information there um about the the drivers and also the staff there and uh, some information about the team so if you want to have a look at that pause that read that um but we are going to click through all 10 teams and listen to what david croft has got to say the red bull team burst onto the f1 scene in 2005 and ever since 2009 they've been one of the top three teams in the championship last season ended brilliantly for them max verstappen won the prestigious drivers championship and red bull are flying high once more Heading into 2022 under the right leadership, Red Bull could find themselves heading up the pack once more. They'll certainly be hoping to end the season with not one but two championship trophies for their cabinet back home in Milton Keynes. So you have it then. And Sebastian Buemi back in Formula One as the reserve driver for Red Bull. That is awesome. Um, you could really get a, a 2010 season going with Hulkenberg, Kubica, and Sebastian Buemi would be hilarious. McLaren are a cornerstone of F1, having been part of the sport since 1966 and winning numerous drivers and constructors championships over the years. Last season, they came a respectable fourth overall, with Daniel Ricciardo and Lando Norris securing the only 1-2 finish of the season. The talented driver pairing of Ricciardo and Norris returns for McLaren this season. And one thing is certain, they're not going to settle until they're reigning champions once more. 
So you can see uh, one of the surprising things, McLaren's car performance 8th, um, driver performance only 5th. But uh, in car 1 you got Daniel, car 2 Lando Reserve Stoffel Van Dorn. Okay, let's uh, move on. Alpine was a new name in 2021, bringing F1 drivers Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon back into the spotlight. Alpine finished the 2021 season in fifth place in the constructors' standings, with their first race win secured by Ocon at the Hungarian Grand Prix. 2022 will be a formative season for Alpine as they return with the tried and trusted driver pairing of Alonso and Ocon. In a few years' time, with the right leadership, they could well become championship contenders. Alpha Tauri have been a name in Formula One since 2020. They're renowned for being the proving ground for talented new F1 drivers. Last season, they ended in sixth overall. Driver Pierre Gasly also earned them an impressive podium finish in Baku. Heading into 2022, the team continued to develop their current driver pairing of Yuki Tsunoda and Gasly. They'll want to continue scoring regular points and begin working their way past the other midfield contenders. We'll come back to Aston Martin since uh, they're the team we're going for. Williams is a legendary name in F1, winning nine Constructors' Championships in their heyday. The Williams family sold the team in 2020, and the 2021 season saw them fighting well from start to end. They finished eighth overall, thanks to some incredible performances by George Russell in his last year as a Williams driver. In 2022, Williams have Nicholas Latifi and new signing Alex Albon, returning to F1 after a year away to make up their driver team. The pressure is on for them to up their performance this season and push their way back towards those midfield places. Alfa Romeo boasts an impressive Formula One history, dating right back to 1950 when they won the very first Drivers' World Championship. However, 2021 saw them finish in ninth overall, with no podium finishes to their name. The team usher in 2022 with a brand new driver lineup. They're joined by F1's first ever Chinese race driver, Joe, as well as veteran Valtteri Bottas, as they build their way back to becoming regular point scorers. Okay, and finally, Haas. Haas joined F1 back in 2016, and they've had a good start to their team career, peaking at fifth place in 2018. Last season, they finished 10th, but they spent a lot of time and focus on designing their car for 2022 and strategizing for the future. Going into the 2022 season, Haas hoped to have a strong car design under their belts. Coupled with hungry drivers, an ambitious team and strong leadership, they'll be pushing their performance and fighting their way back to the midfield. OK, then, here we go with Aston Martin. 2021 was Aston Martin's first full season in Formula One. They roared onto the scene with Sebastian Vettel, the legendary four-time world champion, in one of those coveted driving seats. Despite some teething problems in testing, Aston Martin gave a solid showing and finished the season in seventh place overall. Heading into 2022 with Lance Stroll and Vettel behind the wheel, Aston Martin had the potential to become regular podium contenders, but it's going to take strong leadership and shrewd investment to get them there. So it is going to be a really tough uh, a, a series, I think, to take Aston Martin back to, you know, some sort of glory of, of where they were a few years ago with Force India and uh, Racing Point, of course. That's the first step. We want to get back into uh, being regular point scorers and, and good point scorers as well, competing for fourth in the championship. And then after that, we need to, to be pushing on and trying to become uh, w race win contenders and, of course, um, championship contenders. Now, we've got the ninth best car out of ten. We've got uh, the seventh best driver pairing, uh, the worst staff on the grid, and the fifth best facilities. So, nothing really screaming uh, for the team. Of course, Sebastian Vettel, in his for last season in Formula One in real life, um, we'll see whether we want to keep Sebastian Vettel around into the following season, but I'd like to try and keep it as realistic as possible for the first season in a bit, maybe bring in Fernando Alonso into the team. Uh, Lance Stroll there, 
uh, in car two and of course Nico Hulkenberg my favorite driver in the reserve position so we could get him into a race seat sooner rather than later we've got Andrew Green as our technical chief Ian Gregg as the head of aerodynamics uh, Chris Cronin as the race engineer and Ben Mitchell as uh, another race engineer uh, so iconic car manufacturer Aston Martin have a long motorsport history but not so much in F1 uh, they ran a few races in uh, 1950 but didn't join as a full time member until 2021 uh, the team bring their energy and fresh perspective to the sport and with four time world champion Sebastian Vettel as part of their 2022 lineup, Aston Martin are definitely one to watch so let's get into the series um, just to show you guys the, uh, the different um, options that there are in the game. You can see there are uh, lots of different options. We're playing on um, Ultra for, uh, for a lot of the settings um, and, and High for a lot of them as well. Okay, Controls. Um, let's co apply those settings. Um, you can see those there and Accessibility. So we have got the subtitles on and uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on. So let's uh, go into in the career. So, uh, our name is, of course, Captain. Whoops. And uh, surname is, of course, Good Speed. Uh, first time guidance we will have enabled, and uh, we will be going through as if it is a tutorial. So, let's get into the game. And uh, I'm going to turn my webcam off for now so that you guys get to experience the full screens and uh, everything that's on offer with F1 Manager 2022. So here we go. Hi there, nice to meet you. I'm Audrey Mensah, one of the team's senior engineers. Welcome to the team. It's great to have you on board. Okay, so we've got Audrey, who is going to read us through a lot of this stuff. We have great ambitions here at Aston Martin. And this upcoming season will be the time to achieve them. Let's show you the ropes. As our new team principal, you're responsible for a lot of aspects of the team. Everything from managing our team's growth, overseeing our finances, and deciding on race day strategies will be in your hands. You can keep an eye on most things from your dashboard here. I can take you through it now. First up, an overview of the board. They're the ones who set the expectations for the team. If they're confident in your leadership, you'll be fine. If they lose confidence in you, however, they might look to replace you. The board sets season objectives for the team to achieve. Reaching them will help keep confidence high. So be sure to familiarize yourself with what's expected. You'll want to keep an eye on the long-term objective for beyond this season as well. Okay then. Let's look ahead to the race weekend. We need to start preparing for the next Grand Prix, which will be the first of the season. As it's your first day though, there's nothing urgent for you to address. Feel free to explore more, or you can select continue and sign off for the day. Once you do, time will pass, but don't worry about missing anything. You'll automatically sign back in if an important event comes up. Okay, so let's uh, have a little explore around then. Okay, so um, obviously we've got all of this information on the on the front screen. I'm assuming if you click into them, it'll take you to the specific places. So uh, let's go into inbox. Welcome to the team, Captain. Uh, this is your new inbox. It's good to get into the habit of checking your inbox regularly, as you'll often receive important emails from different sources great having you on board audrey mensa says uh, onto the calendar this is your calendar for the month pay attention to the events that have been marked the race weekends have already been added for you more events will get added as the season progresses okay so we can see the calendar we can push it on how far can we go ah we can just keep going uh, all the way to March 2024, weirdly. Um, that's not the end of the game. I have seen gameplay 10 years in the future. Um, oh, so we have a, a performance review at the end of November. Uh, and then here we get contracts ending with Lance Stroll and Sebastian Vettel. Um, and the research period closes as well. New season car reveal 
is on the 1st of Jan, new season regulations, pre-season preparation. Okay, so um, quite a lot of stuff on the calendar. We'll keep an eye on that. Um, the, these are the um, circuit screens, so we can have a look at all of the 22 circuits. I don't believe there are any more circuits in the game that, that can be added in or anything like that. Um, so there will always be 22 race seasons, which is absolutely fine. That's really, really good. Um, let's have a look at the race. This is where you carry out your final preparations for the next race. We'll come back here later. Okay, so uh, this is the main race screen. I assume, you know, we can do stuff there. That's fine. Okay, let's look at One the cars. Of my favourite places. This is where the car builds happen and where we develop and store our car parts. Throughout the season, you'll want to make sure the team are working on upgrading components and that both cars are being kept in good repair. You can also use car analysis to compare our car builds to other teams. Okay. So, um, do we want to manage the build just yet? Probably not, but let's have a look at car analysis. Every team will continuously develop their cars over the season, so it's important you keep an eye on them. You can compare our team cars against any other team here, or even against an average of all teams. If you want to drill down even further, you can compare performance of specific car parts too. Okay, so uh, let's go E. Um, no, let's not do that. Uh, so you can see the, the grid average, they are quicker in a straight line. They are quicker with their acceleration, quicker with low speed. You know, all of them are, are better than us, um, which is very interesting. You don't expect that with a grid average. Let's go to Williams, though, for instance, and uh, most of our parts are better than theirs. What about somebody like Haas? Oh, all of theirs are better. McLaren? Mm, okay. Alpha Tauri? Ouch. Alpha Romeo? Okay. Mercedes? Alpine. Okay, so we've got a lot of work to do, basically, um, if we want to improve car parts development. Let's have a look at that. To start a project now, you'll need to commit money and engineering time. You'll be able to improve our car builds beyond their current performance. Okay. So let's uh, start a new project. There are three different types of projects the engineering team can work on. We can design a new car part for use this season, manufacture copies of existing designs or undertake research and develop our expertise for next season are you sure oh so um research that does not open up until the 18th of april so we'll have to have a couple of races before we go into re research and uh, manufacturing that is going to be of current car parts so are we short of anything um ah we only have one of a, a new suspension, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, Design-wise, okay. what could we do? Okay, started with a design project. These are car parts we can design and manufacture in-house. Each car part impacts different areas of the car's performance, but certain car parts will have a greater impact than others. You can also view our car performance by rank on grid. This is a useful comparison tool and lets you see how our performance compares to that of all the other cars on the grid. Take a look over the different car parts. The highlights indicate which performance areas they impact the most. Pick one that impacts the ratings you want to improve. Okay, so if we press E, you can see on the right hand side here, um, our car is pretty damn terrible in all areas, <laughs> um, 17th at best. So uh, we want to look at somewhere that is going to improve parts of the car that um, aren't necessarily doing well at the moment. I'm looking at the underfloor. I think that's maybe where we could go. expertise in making new car parts improves with experience. So each new design is likely to be better than an older one. Just make sure to check the new design against the one currently installed. Okay. Testing is also an important step in designing a new car part. Our testing time is limited throughout the season, and it's up to you to decide how much to commit to each design project. Okay. If you assign some testing time to this design now, you can see what effect it will have on the car part. 
once you've taken a look, let's continue. Right, so, uh, computational fluid dynamics simulates airflow over the car to test how it will perform. It improves the design attributes and your team's expertise for this car part. Your CFD testing limit is measured in mega allocation unit hours and every MAUH is equal to a million hours of computer simulation. Okay, um, so we have six hours of this remaining and uh, the next period is 56 days away that's when it will refresh so uh, i think we want to put an hour's worth of cfd in there and uh, we've got 80 wind tunnel hours as well so i mean this is gonna make a significant impact on the car isn't it so let's have a look go on summary ah so it's gonna take 75 days to actually manufacture it so I want to put in a little bit more into this okay you can direct the engineering team to focus on specific areas of performance f1 car parts are complex and sometimes you'll have to sacrifice performance in one area to achieve gains in another over the season we'll understand more about our cars performance which will help you to guide the team's design focus. You can try altering the focus now if you like, or else stick with a balanced approach. When you're ready, continue with the process. So we can go for optimized aerodynamics, high, low speed performance, high speed performance. Okay. Um, I mean, high speed performance, if we maybe just up that a little bit. Yeah. Tiny bit more focus on that. But then that's fifth. Yeah, I mean, this looks pretty good. I think this looks very good, in fact. Yeah. Let's go for that. Um, show car 2 performance. Okay, why is car 2 ever so slightly worse? Okay, so that's, a, that's what we're doing. Cool. As a final step before the team gets started on this design project, you need to decide how many engineers you want working on it. You should also decide what approach they should take. Bear in mind these decisions will have an impact on the duration and cost of the project. When you're happy with everything, confirm the project and the team will get started. Okay, so we want to assign a number of engineers. I assume the more you assign, the less time it'll take. So, I mean, this is a pretty big upgrade. I think we want maybe four engineers on this. And what could we do? So we've got rushed or we've got intense. Um, I think we want to go rushed, which will increase the cost slightly but it will get us this before the start of may which is a big upgrade fairly early in the season i think that'll be good so that's what we're going to go for this is going to cost us 1.6 million to get through what if we were to do that yeah we can't put any more than six so let's go four and let's just do this here we go so, completion day, 23rd of April, time to complete, 47 days, cash remaining, 30 million, cost cap remaining, 11, 111 million. Okay, perfect. Nice work. That's the project started. If you check your calendar, you'll see the team have given you a delivery date for the design. Once it's complete, you'll be able to manufacture that part anytime. Continually designing new car parts is imperative to improving our team's performance and staying competitive on the track. Check out the car analysis area regularly to see how our cars compare to others on the grid. Okay, right. Um, we're not going to look at anything else just yet because we're going to go back to the main menu and uh, have a look at our drivers. This is where you'll find relevant information on the team's drivers and reserve driver, including their performance ratings and contract details. You can also scout for new drivers to make sure we have the best driver pairing we can. 
Okay, so Sebastian Vettel, of course, um, his contract expires, as does Lance Stroll. I'm prepared to give them a little bit of time um, to prove themselves. Obviously, uh, Lance Stroll doesn't have his daddy's um, approval anymore, so we could potentially replace Lance Stroll. I'd love to move Nico Hulkenberg straight in there. It looks like he's got slightly longer left on his contract. You can see here, um, but let's have a look. When a driver has development points available, you can use them to improve their performance. Okay. Highlighting a performance rating will give you more information on their effects. You can also select any of the tabs at the top there to look into the specifics of the driver. For example, before you leave, you might want to check out their current contract with the team. Okay, so let's have a little look. Um, so yeah, he is here till uh, the end of 2023. I would like to, to change that at some point um and get him get him going for next season i mean if you compare his, his stats he is slightly better control and cornering than vettel um what about uh, lance stroll let's compare him with lance stroll um is a smoother driver has more control better cornering growth potential low okay what about vettel average and high on aggression, apparently. Okay, interesting. Right, uh, let's move back then. Let's uh, have a look at scouting some drivers. Um, you can sort them by overall rating. Obviously, Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton are the top rated drivers. You can see all of the different ratings here. Let's uh, get Fernando Alonso scouted because uh, he's, of course, joining Aston Martin in real life. And maybe we we might want to replicate that. Um, the other one I want to scout is Daniel Ricciardo because he is open to negotiation. So, yeah, let's uh, let's have a look at Daniel Ricciardo as well. That could be a a possibility for us. So that's awesome, right? Uh, let's move on. I think you can only do two at a time so uh, on to the staff now it's not just the fastest car that makes a team the best in f1 it's the people doing the hard work behind the scenes manage your staff from here from department heads to your pit crew and keep up to date on their performance okay right then so andrew green is the technical chief ian gregg uh chris cronin ben mitchell of course and uh, the engineering team is as big as it can be for now um, we can maybe increase the design center to increase that we've got two scouts so it would be nice to maybe appoint more scouts uh, oh training focus balanced so we could up all of that I think we just want to keep it on balance for now though for the pit crew and you can scout key staff in there Pete Bonington is the Highest rated Gian Piero Lambiassi, of course, is up there as well. Um, but yeah, very interesting. We've got two of the best engineers, which is good to good to see. Uh, head of aerodynamics. We want to make sure we improve that because uh, we are struggling at the moment with our uh, head of aerodynamics. He's actually the worst on the grid. Um, technical chief also pretty low down as well with Andrew Green. So we'd like to get a couple more in later down the line if we can okay right um on to the next bit facilities from here you can see all the team's facilities from the staff buildings to the car park development centers you can build new facilities or if the team has the time and money upgrade our existing ones facilities affect all areas of our team's performance Okay, so building team facilities impact every area of your team from the quality of your car to the rate your drives improve. Building new facility takes time, money, and all facilities have a monthly upkeep cost you need a budget for. Upgrading existing facilities can be upgraded to improve their effectiveness. Upgrading facilities will also increase their monthly upkeep cost. Facility upgrades can be expensive and are, uh, take a long time to uh, complete uh, refurbishing over time facilities will degrade and their effectiveness reduce refurbishing a facility will restore its effectiveness to maximum upgrading a facility will also restore it back to full condition but with an additional upgrade cost okay over time facilities will degrade and become less effective 
so keep an eye on their condition. When this happens, we'll need to look at refurbishing or even upgrading that facility to get back to maximum efficiency. Okay, awesome. I mean, you can see the car park there. Look at this. This is great. Right, car development facility. So we've got the factory, we've got design center, wind tunnel, CFD simulator, suspension simulator, and car part test center. Um, wind tunnel is an obvious one that you might want to increase. Uh, staff facilities, team hub. We've got um, scouting department, so we can increase the, the scouting capacity, which is good. Um, and a race simulator, which is nice as well. Uh, operations facility, so a boardroom to keep the board happy. Um, hospitality area for the sponsors. Weather center. Uh, helipad, memorabilia room. Don't need that just yet. Uh, and tour center as well, so... Uh, we might want to increase um, the stuff, so um, yeah, if you were to increase that, yeah, okay. Um, maybe the wind tunnel, maybe that's what we want to do. It's going to cost us 10 million and take 63 days, but uh, let's do it. Let's do this. 10 million pounds, that's a lot of money. Um, but I think we need to speculate to accumulate in this series, that's for sure. Let's have a look at the board. Don't forget to check in with the board often. You can monitor board confidence levels, your available budget and your progress towards a greater team rating from here. Okay, so board confidence, they're pretty happy at the moment. You can see their long-term objective is to be a points contender um and uh, that is by 2024 so we want to score in 50 percent of the races in the 2024 season we should be able to do that um board budget you can see uh, the season budget is 52 and a half million and we will be getting 4.2 million every month uh team rating is here so um a two and a half star 510 so 493 from the the last four seasons of performance um same with the driver's results so it gives you points depending on how they performed in in previous years and because we've uh, been in um five uh seasons of f1 they give us one point okay cool right um profile I assume that's going to be mine. Cool. Okay. I don't know if you can change teams in this game. Um, but yeah, you can see the, the rules on stuff. And this all might change going into the future. Um, financial stuff, you can see the season um, prize money share. And then the sporting regulations, so we can get points for pole position, points for faster slap, points for double race. Obviously, the only one in play at the moment is the faster slap bonus points. We can see the um, points allocation could change, CFD testing, wind tunnel, all this sort of stuff. That's really, really cool uh, to see. Right, let's have a look at finances. Here, you can delve deeper into team finances and see our balance, as well as understanding information on income and rewards and the enforced spending caps we have to abide by. Okay, so season balance. Um, you can see the projections looking pretty good, actually. By the end of the season, there's uh, the breakdown, so we can look very, very detailed views in all of this. Wow. This is crazy. Okay. Cool. Uh, and you can see... Uh, a projection of, of all of that as well. Alright. And then uh, you've got the standings, I guess. A monthly balance cost cap, by the way, you can see. Um, projected. So we are projected to have 94 million by the end of the year. And here's some sponsorships as well. Okie dokie. Right. Standings. Um, that just shows the information that we already knew. Okie dokie then. Uh, right, I think we're ready to just about continue here. We've got a sponsorship obligation today, um, some merchandising, and we've also got um, some aerodynamic testing period 
Um, so we might want to design another part of the car. I wonder if that's something we, we want to do. Um, suspension's looking okay. Front wing would be a pretty good one if we can get a new front wing in there. So let's um, add in some more stuff. How long is this going to take? 50 days. Okay. Um, and let's go for another 25 hours. That gives us 30 hours left until the new period. Okay. Um, and what do we want to do? So we've done high speed focus on the other one. So why don't we go for optimized aerodynamics? One, upgrade that a little bit. Yeah, we don't want to get worse, do we? Yeah, we know our high speed is going to get better. Oh, they're looking really good now. Okay, that looks fine. Okay, uh, and we are going to put uh, four engineers on this. We're going to go for rushed again, which gets us it in 31 days. And that's going to cost us 1.2 million. Okay, cool. Right. Um, let's go to the warehouse. This Ooh. is the warehouse. Isn't it wonderful? This is where we store any uninstalled car parts. We can also design and manufacture new and improved aerodynamic car parts in-house throughout the season and install them on our cars. Actually, hold on. Okay, so cars. Every team has two cars, one for each driver. The car is obviously integral. Um, each car is made up of nine different car parts, six aerodynamic and three powertrain. All teams will constantly develop their cars to stay competitive. Okay. The engineering team have just finished manufacturing a suspension system of a brand new design. Okay. Well-designed suspension is crucial to the aerodynamic potential of a race car. We always want the best components possible on our cars. So it's worth checking to see if we should install this one instead of the model we currently have. Okay, let's have a look then. Right. All the available suspension designs are here to look through. Notice how both cars currently have the same suspension design installed. Okay, so uh, they've currently got the AM22S1. Check the new design at the top of the list. As each car can only have one suspension fitted, you'll want to check the stats of the new design to see if it's worth replacing the old one. So the new one gives us... A 0.01 of a kph on the straights it is slightly better but it's not a great upgrade take the time here to compare the two designs you may also want to pay attention to the stats that are crucial for the next race As looks like this new design only has positive impacts on the car that's great news we only have one copy of this suspension at the moment so you need to decide which car to install it on well of course we're going to go Select for the sebastian suspension design and get it installed can't wait to see this in action on the race weekend. Okay then, uh, let's go into this. Let's install it on car one. Great work. That's the new suspension fitted. If you want to have more copies of this design manufactured, you can do so from here. Just remember those F1 mandated spending caps, the official limit on how much we can spend on car development and improvement each season. If you don't want the team to manufacture anything right now, we should probably head back. Okay. Uh, so I think we want to manufacture that. We want that on Stroll's car as well. Um, so we can get that in in six days, which I think we'll get it in time. Yeah, well, I think we only want one for now. Um, if we have a crash, we have a crash, and, and uh, you know, it we've got plenty of the other ones. Manufacture a new car part. If you check your calendar, they'll have given you a delivery date. Now all you have to do is wait patiently and let the magic happen. Okay, cool. Right. Um, let's head back to the main menu then. Let's go home. Um, let's have a look at the calendar. So we have got the sponsorship obligation today. Um, we have got the sponsorship obligation on there. The pre-season pre testing results as well. 
Um, we've manufactured the suspension by then, and then it's the 18th of March where the season begins our upgrade. So we've got Bahrain, then Jeddah, of course, and then our upgrade is seeming, yeah, design complete there. It won't be in place straight away because we'll have to manufacture it. Um, where's our other design? So the design's complete there. So that's the floor. Uh, our new front wing should be in place for Imola and then the new floor should be in place for Miami. So interesting. Very, very interesting. Right. Um, let's get ourselves into uh, the race weekend or, or at least continue and see what's going to happen. It's no longer your first day. We'll have you on top of things in no time. You'll continue moving through days this way until it's time for the race, which you can see in the upcoming events list. It's good to get in the habit of regularly checking that list. Okay. Let's take a look at what needs doing today. You have an alert in the top corner. There's an important email awaiting a response, so you should check your inbox when you're ready. Let's have a look then. So, um, we've got a welcome to the team. Car development key staff. Sponsor obligations. Um, okay. So, yeah, we can't uh, negotiate our own for the first season. Looks like you've received a budget approval request. Most of the team's budget is decided by the board at the start of the season. Plus whatever we get from last season's prize money and any extra sponsorship revenue we earn. Okay, so they want uh, to have a season kickoff party. It's only going to be 10 grand. Let's go for it. Improve driver morale, improve staff morale. I reckon that's a good decision. It should keep the team in high spirits anyway. Okay, cool. Now that's dealt with, we can focus on our first Grand Prix of the season. The race weekend is still a few days away, so move forward when you're ready. Right, let's do this then. Right, I'll put my uh, ugly mug back on for a little bit, but this is totally awesome so far. It's sort of a, a cross between Motorsport Manager and Grand Prix World. It's got the detail of Grand Prix World, but the, the accessibility and usability of Motorsport Manager. I'm We're really, really impressed very so far. Close to race day now. Just continue to do anything that's needed. In the future, you'll also want to decide on these actions yourself to ensure our team are continuously developing and improving. Okay, right. Um, so it's saying we've got low stock. Uh, I'm not that worried about it, let's be honest. But there you go, manufacturing complete. Uh, we have got our new suspension. Um, Pulse testing, uh, pre-season testing results. So high speed, we are really, really struggling. Um, as well as medium speed as well. We're actually the worst car in those areas. Um, so maybe we are slightly behind where we thought we might be um, but we are hopefully going to be in front of Williams we'll install that onto car two and we will continue on to the race weekend There's always exciting time to do before we can set off check your inbox for the race prep report on this weekend circuit okay so head to the inbox uh, race prep okay you have all the information you should need Let's head to race preparation to see if there's any remaining tasks for us to complete. I have to say, she's a bit annoying. She's uh, saying everything, but I guess that's the point. Um, so that we, you know, know this in and out um, before we move on. But uh, the Bahrain Grand Prix is almost here, so we wanted to make sure that the team is prepared before we leave. As always, please make sure. So we've got circuit info, performance targets, car builds. You're sincerely, Chris. Okay, so 57 laps. Uh, that's still Pedro de la Rosa's uh, lap record, I believe. That could go. That could go today. But uh, let's go to race preparation. This is your race preparation area, where you'll get the team ready for the upcoming race weekend. You can also find all the information you need on the circuit we're racing on here. One thing you'll always need to do before each race weekend is setting our performance targets. These help us generate more potential rewards for the team. Okay, so let's go into performance targets. Here we've got the performance targets for this coming weekend. If we meet these, we'll gain extra revenue. 
Right. Okay, so incentives each race as team sponsors will send you targets to earn extra money. Sponsors will always offer incentives, which give them a larger financial award um, if we achieve them. Guarantee. So if we guarantee something, they'll give us more money, but we could also lose money. Um, target types, performance targets will apply to either the qualifying uh, session race or hot streak. Looks okay. like we've got incentives for both the qualifying session and the race. If we can reach those targets, we'll get an additional payout and it won't cost the team anything if we don't meet them. You can also decide to add targets here and offer our sponsors guarantees. These are a risk as we face a potential financial loss if we don't meet them. But okay, if you want to offer a guarantee for this weekend and raise the team's potential rewards, now is your chance. I feel like we're not going to have a look at guarantees, but we can put uh, Reach Q3, Reach Q2 in there. Um, we can put a finish position in there. And we can put a finish position streak in there as well. So they're looking for us to finish fifth, uh, qualify 15th, um, finish with the fastest lap. That's not going to happen. And um, finish 15th that many four races in a row. Okay. You've done everything needed, and the team can't wait to get started. It's time for the first race of the season. You can take some more time to look around if you like. When you're ready, let's get this show on the road. Okay, so it's time for race weekend. This first episode, by the way, will be around about an hour and a half, maybe more closer to two hours. Um, but we will see. Let's get into the action and the Bahrain Grand Prix. Enjoy. I'm excited, really excited. I'll take my ugly mug off so that we can see it all, but here we go. Welcome to the archipelago of Formula One. Bahrain might have a small land footprint, but it's showing its big spirit right now in the grandstands. Either way, it's time for another fantastic weekend of Grand Prix racing. The Bahrain International Circuit is a challenging track, and the cars routinely have to brake from high gear to low to take the narrow turns. With the need for downhill braking, the risk of locking up is one drivers will need to manage. It's all about focus and balance to get victory here. At this early stage in the season, there are still plenty of opportunities for things to change. In this sport, there simply are no guarantees. Stay right here, because we're just getting started. Great to see you again. Welcome to your first race weekend with the team. It's Friday, so we're kicking off with free practice one as usual. Okay, so practice, uh, qualifying and the race. I assume you all know that. If you want to read that, feel free to have a little look at it. So uh, practice one, practice two and practice three. Um, let's see how we can get on. Over here is our race preparation area. This is where you can make any changes you need ahead of the upcoming practice session. Rest assured the team have already prepared the cars for practice. When you're ready, we can continue to the practice session. Okay, so I think we want um, Vettel to be on medium compound tyres. Um, all the car parts look good. Car set up. Aha, so ah, this, this looks a little bit like um, Motorsport Manager. You can sort of slide these and it'll tell you where the engineers um, recommend okay so we probably want um, slightly lower rear wing that, that looks all right for a start um, and we'll see after a, a, an initial run when that's going to go, so we'll go 12 laps on that. Yeah, that looks fine by me. Right, let's go back. Um, and yeah, why not go for softs with good old Lancey? Um, yeah, again, we want a slightly lower downforce setup. And they're pretty in the middle, aren't they? Surely you want more brain stability, don't you? 
Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Run plan. Uh, we'll go for 10 laps for him. Driving options, absolutely fine. Right, so those two are ready. Let's go to practice one. During race weekends, you can decide whether you want to manage the practice sessions yourself or whether to hand over control to your team. As it's your first race weekend, you should let the team handle the practice sessions. Ah, how annoying. So I can't actually take control of practice because I've got the tutorial on. That is a bummer. I really think they should allow you the choice of that. Um, but anyway, let's simulate a qualifying. Nothing we can do there. All right, let's hopefully we've done all right. Um, at the very least, we're aiming for 17th and 18th rather than 19th and 20th. But I do have worries. Let's have a look then. We return to our highly anticipated race weekend just in time for the start of qualifying. There's very little time to relax because each and every driver will need to bring their A-game to the track for qualifying. They'll need to push themselves to the limit if they're to be challenging for a strong grid position. You simply never know what you'll see come qualifying. Strap yourselves in. This is Formula One. Awesome. Right. Let's have a look. So Charles Leclerc was uh, fastest in practice three. Uh, oh, dearie me. Sebastian Vettel, 17, six tenths ahead of uh, Lance Stroll, though. Not too far off the likes of Schumacher, Sonoda, and Ricardo. Um, to help wow. maximize our driver's performance, the team had them work on three goals during practice track acclimatization, car parts knowledge, and setup confidence. If you manage the session yourself, you might get an even better performance from the drivers for the rest of the weekend. Okay, right. Um, let's see. I mean, Vettel's confidence, 84%. Set of confidence for Stroll, 79 Can right. we change that? Time for qualifying. Our results here will determine where we start on the grid for Sunday's race. Qualifying takes place over three knockout rounds, and only the fastest drivers will advance each time. Okay, right. So, qualifying time. Um, let's have a look at... The, ah, so here we go. Results. So, P1 uh, it was Leclerc, 133.2. A 133.0 and a 132.8. So, Leclerc looking very, very fast. But it was Carlos Sainz that was quickest in uh, practice two. So, P uh, practice one, Lance Stroll was very slightly quicker than Sebastian Vettel on a 136.0. Um, P2, then Vettel was uh, once again quicker than Lance Stroll. And then P3, Vettel was a lot quicker. Okay. Uh, not sure we're going to pass our sponsor objective, but we'll try our very best. Um, let's go into car setup for Sebastian Vettel. Um, it's just a straight line speed. Could do with a little less of that, apparently. So maybe we go for, for that. Try and just adjust things ever so slightly, get them nearer to where they were. Honestly, that looks pretty good. That's got to be a good setup for Sebastian, so we'll go for that. Um, should we go for two flying laps with Sebastian? Yeah, let's go for two on the first run. Um, that's fine. Okay, and then back, uh, and then on a land stroll. I wish we could copy setups. Um, so he actually wants a little bit more straight line speed. I can give you that. So I want that more towards there. That looks pretty good to me. Okay. And then we want slightly. Yep, 
Yeah, that'll just have to do, won't it? Right, okay. Um, and we'll go for one flying lap for Lance Stroll. So let's get into qualifying. Here we go. Same as practice. The team can handle qualifying for you if you like. Let's get you hands on for this round, though, just to make sure you're feeling confident before race day kicks off. Thank goodness. I thought we were not going to get qualifying there. Um, but let's confirm and get into it. Here we go. Our drivers need to be set in their fastest possible lap times so we can advance to the next round of qualifying. The slowest five cars will be knocked out. Keep a careful eye on time remaining. The time limit on qualifying rounds really ramps up the pressure. Right then, let's get a car out on the track for its first run and see how it goes. Let's send out Sebastian Vettel then. Ooh, the radios. Yep, we're out of clear. That's so awesome. Green light, green light. So Sebastian Vettel is out there. And uh, we can flick through all of the different cameras. I love all of these. Brilliant. Um, let's send Lance Stroll out there as well. And so you could very well end up in traffic if you're not careful. So, um, But this is uh, the main map. The sort of management map, Each if you like. It's fitted with a number of onboard cameras so you can see the action as it happens. You can also use the map view if you like. It gives you a good overview of the whole track and all the cars. Okay. Remember you're managing two drivers throughout the session, so make sure to keep an eye on both of them. Cool, right. So, uh, we will hop on board with Sebastian Vettel when he comes round. So here he comes. Let's uh, go on a flying lap with Sebastian Vettel then. So what sort of times are we looking for? Um, he's off and running. Aha, here we go. So he was, I think it was, what, 133s in practice was sort of front running pace. So that's maybe where we want to think about. Lance Stroll is just coming onto his lap now. Is he going to get past that Mercedes car? Uh, it looks like he's been held up. He's going very, very slow around the first couple of corners. Vettel purple in the first sector. And Stroll definitely struggling. I don't know. He is past the Mercedes now, but... I don't think he's um, quite there. Oh, now there's a, a Ferrari coming up. I hope he gets out of the way. So we're happy to let these tyres cool a bit. Lovely. Come on. Come on. That's fine. We're through. Perfect. Get on the power. That's all right. We're coming through the end of the second sector. This is not bad. Rears are hot. Okay. So two purple sectors, of course. Stroll not really going to be in with a chance of beating that. Let's have a look at his sector times. Oh, he's gone purple in the middle sector now. So Sebastian Vettel coming up to the line. What's it going to be? It's a 133.5. That's not bad. That's not bad. Now Vettel's going to have a cool down lap. And here comes Lance Stroll. Obviously, he was impeded by the Mercedes earlier on. So he's not going to quite be as quick as Vettel. Comes up to the line. And it's a 136. But a purple third sector. So Stroll is looking the stronger of the two cars so we'll call him in and uh, we'll see what he can do 41 7 let's let's compare those so Vettel um, can we look at this time doesn't look like we can unless uh, up here we can aha yes here from the data view you can see live data from the current session here we can see the latest lap and sector times for all drivers here you can also view how the current session there's okay. plenty more to dive in. yeah we don't want to uh lap history that's what we want um so yeah M middle sector for vettel 10 slower than stroll um third sector 24 what yeah so they're pretty comparable really aren't they pretty comparable um but yeah Lance Stroll will be will be coming in this lap. We'll keep an eye on him. 
But yeah, Sebastian Vettel will be starting his second flying lap. And why don't we take manual control this time? Fuel commands allow drivers to manage them. Okay. Just keep an eye on your remaining fuel. Yeah, let's not really look at that. If a driver needs an addition. Okay. There are three e harvest will Okay. I, I, I'm sorry about that, but uh, I want to get into the flow of, of the action. She's going to talk about tyres now. <laughs> okay. Keep an eye. Cool. That's fine. I think we can work that out. Right, so let's uh, have a look at his sector. Oh. No, here we go. Here we go. He's going to come up to the line. Oh, no, that's Stroll. That's Stroll. Ah, oh, that was a. Uh, that was very strange. Right. So let's see how Vettel gets on in sector one. Comes through the first sector split. It is a personal best. It is a personal best. We are quicker than Williams at the moment. Right. So Vettel, come on. We've got 11 minutes 52 seconds remaining in qualifying. So how we? gonna get on here come on Vettel let's just up that pace slightly okay, there's a bit of traffic coming up this is an ideal it is green though come on that's it they get out of the way beautifully so he comes round the final corner and Sebastian Vettel's gonna come up to the line what sort of time is he gonna put in here Going to be an improvement. Hmm. Don't think it was much of an improvement, if at all. So that's a pity. So we'll call Vettel in. We'll reconfigure uh, Stroll's car. Run plan. Yeah, maybe we'll. Yeah, we'll give uh, Stroll the the option of doing two laps this time so let's uh, run the time down a little bit we we'll back in the pit Our driver is back in the pit okay nice the team right here you can so Vettel we want Mac right Vettel's gonna go softs then um, his run plan this time is gonna be a one Okay, cool. That's fine. Brilliant. The car's ready to head back out at your say so. It's probably best to do at least one more. The track will have more. Cool. Right. So we want to send out uh, Lance Stroll at some point, maybe with about five and a half minutes to go. Should. Mm, although he is going to do a cool down, isn't he? So we'll send him out now. And hang on. Why is that not? Working for Vettel. What's wrong with Vettel? Why can't he? Right, let's go for that. Do that. Okay, that seems fine. So they're reconfiguring now. I think she broke it, essentially. But for some reason, I can't send them out. I don't know why. Is it fuel? Do we need to add in some fuel? It's because he didn't have enough fuel. Let's go for one extra lap of fuel. There we go. Right, Vettel's out now. It's just about got enough time, I think. Uh, Lance Stroll. Green in the first sector. Okay. Let's keep an eye on him. What's he going to do through the, the middle sector? Let's run on board with him. Let's go for this camera angle. And what's he managing? Oh, yellow in the middle sector. So this is his first representative 
lap time. He comes up to the line. And that puts him 18th, so a 10th behind Sebastian Vettel. So Vettel's about to do his final lap. Here we go. Full send it. Sebastian Vettel, please. Here we go. So Sebastian Vettel onto his final flying lap. Let's see what he can pull off here. Comes through the first sector. It is green. I just don't think we've got quite enough time in us to knock out uh, Daniel Ricciardo. But we are a couple of tenths ahead of Albon. Well ahead of Nicholas Latifi. So here he comes through the middle sector. And it is green as well. So this is good from Sebastian Vettel. We need to charge here. So he's run out of VRS, but it doesn't really matter. We come round the final corner. That's a decent exit onto the curbs. He goes and he comes up to the line. What's it going to be? Well, the um, first flying lap could have gone better, but never mind. Keep an eye on the stand. Right then. That qualifying run is done. I know everything happened. Yeah, I'm not sure. That wasn't actually a, a better time for Sebastian Vettel. That's a pity. That is a pity, so he's going to be coming in. Now, let's keep an eye on Lance Stroll. This is his final flying lap. It's green through the first sector. But we have got a little bit of traffic coming up. Which is an issue. Okay, and all the way to zero. All the way to zero. Car off. So here we go. Come on, Strawley. Not the best line through there. Can he improve through the middle sector? No, this isn't good enough. I don't think this is going to be anywhere near. Good enough, we need... What do we need? Uh, so got the lap time. Yeah, 133.6. So here we come, up to the line. Can he do it? Oh, he did get a 133.5, but it's not quite enough. Um, but he gets to within two thousandths of a second of his teammate, Sebastian Vettel. So 17th and 18th in our first qualifying session of the season. It's it's not the absolute worst. It really isn't. Um, so let's uh, now bring everybody in. And um, there it is. It looks like we didn't make it through to Q2. Okay, so 17th and 18th. Um, as I say, decently ahead of both Williams' cars and actually very, very evenly matched um, between the drivers. So that's not too bad at all. Um, but yeah, we, we could have done better. Tension continues to build here as race day begins. Aston Martin were on target for qualifying. Now it's up to them to defy expectations for the race itself. Alpha Tauri did rather well in qualifying. Let's see if they can manage to achieve a strong start for the race itself. And the night sky here is very overcast, with no moon or stars in sight. This might spell trouble for the teams and their drivers. And there's going to be a lot for the teams to handle. So will the drivers and their cars be able to cope with the pressure? Let's find out right here at the Bahrain Grand Prix. Right then, time for the main event, the Bahrain Grand Prix. This is a great time for us to get some early points under our belt. So let's stay focused and push hard. Okay, it's race time then. Let's get into it. Uh, of course, in qualifying, we uh, were 17th and 18th. Um, so we're going to have to look at the strategy. One pit stop to fit new tyres. On average, a pit stop will cost a driver about 25 seconds. So we need to think carefully about when to pit and why. Okay. 
So, strategy. You can plan race strategies before the race start. A race a strategy consists of a sequence of planned pit stops at the lap they occur on and the tyre compound to change to. Your team will offer a data-driven recommended strategy. Uh, planning. Planning race strategies allows you to analyse your pre-race options, view the weather forecast, have a strategy to match different outcomes. You can create your own strategy from scratch. Um, don't forget the tyre rule of strategy, so you can start without a strategy um, and, and basically go off strategy Let's itself. Let's set a tyre strategy for our drivers now. We need to make sure we have a good plan for when we want the cars to pit. Okay then, so uh, let's have a look at Lance Stroll first because he's going to be the alternate guy. The team will prepare some recommended strategies to choose from. Let's see what they suggest for this race. So I'm thinking okay. with Lance Stroll. Strategy A is a fast but risky option, relying on two soft stints and no hard compound at all. Strategy B is a well-balanced option, two soft stints and a nice long middle stint on a hard compound. Right. Strategy C is a slower but safe option for this track. We'll tackle the final stint on a medium compound instead of a soft tyre. If you think a different approach could work, you can make changes to any of the team's strategies or even create one from scratch. We can always adapt our strategy during the race so we can respond quickly to changing conditions and stay ahead of the pack. Okay, so... Um, interesting interesting i think with uh, lance i think we want to maybe add a new strategy for him uh we want to start him on the medium tires um come on I, I, we can actually change one of these ones can't we so change this one nobody would ever go for this strategy uh so let's go medium to start off with and then and then hard. So let's try a one stopper. Remove that stint. So how how far into the race can we go with Lance? We'll probably take him to lap twenty four or so. If we go super conservative, I think we can do this. Just about. Um, and that will that will help us out a little bit, I think. So let's let's go with the yeah let's go with the the one stop. Eh? Is a good choice. Going safe for your first race isn't a bad idea. Okay, now to select a strategy for our other driver. It doesn't have to be the same for both. Okay, so we're going uh, strategy C for Lance Stroll. Starting on the mediums. If there's a safety car, you know, part way through or towards the end of the race, then we'll think about that then. Uh, now, Sebastian Vettel, whoops, uh, we are going to go... You should consider picking a different strategy for each driver. This gives us a chance to take advantage of in-race events and means we won't have both cars pitting on the same lap. We might go for the middle strategy. That's both drivers with a set strategy in place. Right, let's head back to the preparation area and get this race started. So, estimated race time, um, 1 hour 30... 57 so uh, the top one is slightly quicker um, let's have a little look at strategy here um, if we were to go slightly lighter in the middle stint come in a bit earlier and go aggressive Yeah, something like that maybe. Or if we conserve slightly at the start. I mean, a, a lot goes down to what compounds we've got as well. Uh, we, we should really have a look at that. Because Vettel will have used a decent amount of soft tyres. Can we actually see what compounds he's got? So he's got, he has got two new sets of, of softs. What about Strawley? Stroll has two, two new sets of soft as well. Uh, does Vettel have a new... He do, he's got two sets of mediums, actually. Okay. Yeah, let's go for that. So, strategy A, strategy C. Uh, one stop F for Lance Stroll. So, driver options. At the start of the race, Vettel's going to be 
normal. Um, we're going to have him on overtake at the start of the race to try and make up some ground. We'll do the same with Lance Stroll and we're going to go slight conservation in, in both stints. Okay, right, without further ado, let's get into the race then. Here we go. Cloudy skies tonight, with the drivers now having taken position on the grid. And there's Sebastian Vettel. They'll be starting the race from the bottom half of the grid, so there's a fair bit of ground to make up. There's Lance Stroll, down the grid. With their starting position in the back ten, they'll have their work cut out for them. Will their hard work pay off today? Here we go then. And We're ready for the it, lights. The Bahrain Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. So lights out, away we go. We hop straight on board with Sebastian Vettel. We're not really bothered about what's happening up top. And Stroll doing as well. Stroll has dropped back a little bit. Vettel's got an outside line here. He could make it pay. We're very, very slow through these couple of corners. No contact through the first quarter but we are past Mick Schumacher that's very very good now can he make a move on Daniel Ricciardo here as Stroll moves down to 19th place Vettel now Aston Martin with a great play there they've moved up a place now behind Daniel Ricciardo as Lance Stroll is having a little look at uh, Alexander Albon What's happening up top? We've got Charles Leclerc leading from Carlos Sainz. Verstappen third, Perez fourth, Bottas in fifth. Very, very good start for him. Uh, Lewis Hamilton is in sixth place with Pierre Gasly seventh, Russell eighth, Alonso ninth, and Esteban Ocon uh, in the top ten as well. Very, very good stuff. Uh, Vettel is chasing after Daniel Ricciardo. Let's uh, get him back down to neutral. And same for... Strawley. And now we try and look after the tyres, get into the stint, and see how we get on. First lap is almost complete. We need to try and stay in that one second window to Daniel Ricciardo ahead. And Mick Schumacher is looking more likely to pass us. Come on then, Vettel. Let's go for it. Should we, should we deploy? So use energy. Copy. Let's see how far we can get with it. Oh, there's been an incident at turn one. Well, well, well. What happened there? That was um, Kevin Magnuson, I think. We're going to drop down to neutral again. Is there going to be a safety car? I think that was a crash. Let's have a little look. Let's have a look. Watch this, we're looking at Lando Norris. So it's Norris ahead of Kevin Magnussen. Magnussen goes, oh he locks up and That's straight into the back of match. Norris and they're both off. Felt that. But no That's safety car. Moving up the field. Good. Yeah. Vettel very much in Daniel Ricciardo's grasp here I think. This is good stuff. Let's keep going. Now, let's see what tyres people have gone for. Looks like everybody has gone for um, softs. K-Mag's picked up a penalty. Okay. Very good. Just going to turn down your audio a little bit. Um, because it is pretty loud with all the, the cars on track. Stroll uh, still chasing after Alexander Albon. Could do with getting into that one second window. So we're going to go on to overtake for him. Do what you can. Yeah, okay. Oh, we've got some action behind. But Vettel, as we go on to lap three of this Grand Prix, needs to be in that one second window. So let's uh, let's put DRS. overtake on. Pushing hard now, pushing hard. Can we get into that one second window? 
as Kevin Magnussen comes into the pit lane. Early pit for him. We'll have that five second stop go penalty, you would think. So, is Vettel in that one second window? I think he's just dropped out of it, but DRS is going to pull him back towards Ricardo. And Stroll getting on. Getting back into that one second window, which is good. So that's what we need to do. Make sure we conserve the tyres. Very good. Good start for us here. And it's time to zoom it on a little bit. And keep an eye on the the track map. Oh, Vettel. Vettel's just overtaken Daniel Ricciardo with the DRS. Looks like Aston Martin. Awesome stuff. Let's have a little look position. at this. We can take a look now. So, so Vettel the with the DRS straight through on Daniel Ricciardo this time. Must have got a much better exit. And go through now. Can we use this to defend now? And push on a little bit. Oh, is Daniel Ricciardo going to come back at us? Oh, we could be having a double overtake here. Schumacher on the outside. Ricciardo on the inside. And we lose two positions there. That was not what you want to see, but he's and coming back. An from Williams. And, uh, well, Albon has overtaken Stroll again. Well, Vettel getting ahead of that group quite nicely. Can he stay with them as we head down towards the heavy braking zone? He had an excellent exit from here last lap. What can he do this time? Let's run on board with him. Is he going to manage to do it? Oh, he's closing in lovely here. Need to actually put that on to overtake again. So we're happy to push the tyres hard now. Push the tyres. Copy. Okay, so let's set up. Nicely done. The overtake. Looks like Stroll yeah. has just uh, got past Albon. Probably on that DRS straight. Remember, Stroll sort of needs to stay within 30 seconds of Vettel to make this strategy work for him. He's a bit too far back. We have low battery. As the race progresses, okay. remember to keep an eye on the planned strategy you put in place before the race. The strategy view will let you check your strategy, adjust it, or even change it entirely. The data view is also an important area to track during the race. It gives you a deep dive into race data, including lap times for all the team's drivers. Okay. Okay, so we can see everything that's going on. It doesn't look like we're going to make that over move, the race, overtake move the stick. View to check on each driver's strategy and adjust them if need be. You can, you can also use the car and track tabs to view more details about them. The car tab shows you current and projected component condition and fuel loads, while the track tab has more information about weather and track grip. Okay. All right. I think we're looking okay at this point. I've just got to sort of keep an eye out on... Uh, Vettel is doing a little bit better on his tyres than we thought, as is um, Lance Stroll. So, good stuff. Um, but I think it's maybe time to zoom on a little bit. So, let's take that. Hopefully Vettel can overtake uh, these two at some point. Mm, so, Stroll losing position as well. And a new position just gained by Williams. So can Vettel stay with this group? That's the, the big question. It looks like Stroll is back past. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. So I think we'll zoom on a little bit until the the pit window. Ah, Stroll's locked up and gone wide. Well, well, well. That's not good. That is not good. So now down in 19th place. Let's have a Let's look at this. What, there. what a pity. This was the Aston Martin. 
and this, yes, there, that's mm. the locker. I think he was trying to get past uh, Albon there, but it's gone wrong. And now Stroll in a lot of trouble, but can he catch up to them on his medium tyres? Vettel right behind Mick Schumacher, losing ground to Ricardo a little bit. But they're sort of being dragged along in this DRS train. Vettel having a look now. Oh, that was close. That was close, but um, yeah, Stroll is coming up to the back of those. Which is good if he can conserve his tyres and then, you know, when they come in, push them a little bit. Yeah, Vettel just stuck behind Schumacher and Ricardo. For now, let's zoom it on again. Careful of running wide. Was that... Was that Stroll again? I think, we've had a I think it was. Wow, let's he's had two. Let's have a look two here. instances this now, and there you go. He does run a little They're wide. Doesn't cost him too right much. There. That isn't good. Doesn't cost him too much, but isn't a good start of the season for Lance Stroll. That's for sure. So Vettel pushing on. Still in this little group with Schumacher and Ricardo. I'm wondering if it'll be worth bringing him in a little early. And now Vettel's ran wide. Well, well, well. Someone's run wide. This is not good. All right, I think we're going to change strategy here. We're going to go hard's middle stint. So that means we're going to attack um, for the next few laps. We're going to try and get past these two. Um, so there you go. We've entered the pit window. Okay, our driver has just entered the pit window. The pit window encompasses the laps that cover the planned pit stops in your strategy. This means it's nearly time to call the planned pit stop. Unless you think there's a reason to pit immediately, I always recommend sticking to the strategy and pitting on the optimal lap. I think we want to undercut these guys because we could go soft, medium, medium. So yeah, we're gonna see if he can get past in the DRS zone. If not, I'm gonna call him in. And he can't. Right, so we are gonna call him in this lap. Right. Let's have a look. Let's talk tyres. During dry races, all cars need to use at least two different tyre compounds. If a car doesn't comply with this rule, it will be disqualified from the race. Ultimately, it's your decision on which tyre compounds we go for. Although I'd strongly recommend sticking to the starting strategy when possible. You can see the estimated lap lifetime for each tyre when you focus on them. Once you've decided which tyre to move to, just confirm the pit stop with the team. Right, so Vettel's going to come in, he's going to put on the medium tyres. And we're going to try for the undercut, so I want to move him down to aggressive. Um, but we are going to push hard. So we're going to harvest for the rest of this lap. And then he's going to come into the pits. So it's going to be our first pit stop of F1 Manager 22. So here we go. Vettel coming into the pits now. Sebastian, pit leg. Copy. Just pit limiter. Just a reminder on pit limiter. Just got to be... Careful, we'll land stroll now. We surely are going to come out behind Lando Norris. But we're away. 2.9 seconds, that's a very, very strong pit stop. As soon as we are out. So it's going to say completed. Aha, right. So we want to be aggressive on the tyres. We want to push fuel. Um, we're going to go neutral on the ERS. And we're going to try and undercut Ricardo. 
and uh, Schumacher who are battling it out. We're going to try the undercut here. So here we go. So Vettel pushing hard. Let's keep an eye on Ricardo and Schumacher. Either of them going to react to our pit stop. No, they both stay out. So keep an eye on Vettel's sector times. Looking pretty good. Last lap, 159.7, of course. Uh, Ricardo, 140.4. Um, interval is probably the best one to look at. Gap to leader, so 56.4. And we are actually running at leader's pace at the moment. That's pretty good. Right, we're going to move that back down to balanced. I'm going to keep going aggressive on the tyres. For now. This is looking good. Stroll still... I mean, Stroll over a pit stop behind Vettel. That is embarrassing, really. So we got Mick Schumacher ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. We are definitely catching up to them. Are they going to come in? Ricciardo's in the pit. So where is Vettel going to come out in comparison to him? That's the question. He's coming down the pit straight now. You can see Ricciardo is leaving the pit lane on the right-hand side there. Vettel coming through. Still coming through. There's Ricardo on the right. And he's going to slow down. Why did he slow down? Ricardo, though, has gone onto the hard tyres. So, can Vettel get Daniel Ricardo straight away here? I'm going to go on overtake. Pushing now. Okay. So, that's a disappointment. I thought we were going to get the undercut there. But now we're stuck behind uh, Daniel Ricciardo and Mick Schumacher. It's going to be in a pretty good position. He's surely going to be coming in this lap to react to us. But Ricciardo won't have uh, ERS and DRS here. But look at this. We don't need the DRS. But he's going to get it back here. But that was a great overtaking manoeuvre. Let's have a look at Daniel Ricciardo though. Oh no, we have got DRS. So we pull away. Looks like Aston and Martin now, have just gained a race position. Important for Vettel to try and get more than a second ahead. Push on now. That's what we can do on these tyres. We're on the better tyres. Better temperatures. Okay. Very good. And a green middle sector. That's exactly what we want to see. Mick Schumacher is in the pits meanwhile. Here comes Vettel, as Schumacher stopping now. So Vettel coming down the pit lane, of course, Hassa right at the end of the pit lane. So here comes Vettel. And he's through on Mick Schumacher, absolutely perfect. So the strategy seems to have worked. What, what tyres are people on now? So Ricardo and Mick Schumacher are on the hards. Um, nobody's actually That's gone medium, so... They've moved up a place. That is interesting. Okay. Right then. Let's uh let's keep looking from the, the track map view. So Vettel is ahead of Ricardo. Can he stay ahead of Ricardo? That's gonna be the big question really. Is Ricardo gonna get back past him through the DRS zone? Yes he is. So Vettel in a little bit a of trouble overtake. in terms of Looks like a pit stop issue for Alpha Tauri. Hang on. In terms of Ricardo, there is um, oh, yellow flags. That was Latifi, there. I think. And Stroll, I think. Can he hold back the other cars? Yeah, hold back other cars. Why not? We've just had a car run wide. Hamilton running wide. Okay. But. Yeah, Vettel now behind the Haas and the McLaren, McLaren again. A position. And goes Vettel. He's closing in with DRS, but not, not very well. I mean, we have all of those pitted. Not sure. Let's have a look. Stops. Yeah, everybody's pitted now. Tire wise. Oh, it's, uh, there's a fairly... Oh, for goodness sake, Lance. 
<sighs> Lundstroll has had an awful Grand Prix. He really has. I think there's been a lockup. Really, really bad. Right. So let's uh, let's work this out with Vettel. Do we go for another medium stint towards the end of the Grand Prix? You know, lap wise, he's not doing as well as the guys in front on hards. So Stroll's entered the pit window. What's his tyres looking like? Forty-two percent. I think we can keep him out a little bit longer in the hope for a safety car. Um, more yellow flags. Seems to have been a lockup. And that was Gasly this time. We are really closing in on these guys in front, and Sonoda goes wide as well. So both Alpha Tauri's having issues on that lap. But Vettel doing a really good job sticking with these guys, and there could be an outside chance of a point here if he keeps going. So Vettel on standard aggression at the moment. How are the tyres holding up for the other competitors? Okay, they're in the 80s. So Vettel and... Well, Vettel is definitely on the, the most worn tyres in the field at the moment. But he just can't get past. He's stuck behind these guys. So we're going to have to think of, a, of another strategy here, I think. Um, we'll get my ugly mug back. Um, I think we need to be maybe going medium again. Um, I think we're going to ignore that for now. Oh, hang on. We want that on neutral. I don't know when that ever got changed. Uh, we'll let that go to, to about 20% or so before we bring him in. Vettel's still sticking with these guys in front, which is good to see. How long can he take this stint? That's the question, because we brought him in a little bit earlier, went a bit more aggressive than we'd planned. But yeah, we're just in a DRS train at the moment. And that's the issue. Needs to get out of this. Vettel. Struggling to stay with these guys. Oh, there's another. Oh, it's Hamilton again. Hamilton had another lockup. I'm not happy with the grip. Copy. How many laps am I going to get on these? Okay. Where is Stroll? So Stroll's at the start of the lap. Right, we're going to full attack these and we're going to bring them in. Push now. Yeah. At the end of this lap. So here no we go. Required. Okay. I'm going to pit this lap with him. Vettel's still stuck behind these cars. I wonder if he can go maybe a little bit lighter on these tyres and Get back up. stick with them. As long as he can stay in the DRS, he's in with a good shout. And there goes Ricardo back past Mick Schumacher. So Vettel right in behind the Haas of Schumacher now. This is the issue. Schumacher now has DRS on Ricardo. He's going to have a little look down the inside, is he? No, not quite. So let's uh, let's harvest that energy for a little bit. We just need to charge up. Okay, copy. I'm going to conserve fuel as well. We're going to go ultra conservation with Seb. So Lance Stroll in the pits. Here he comes. We are all okay on fuel. All okay on fuel. So you can do what you want for speed. Yeah, copy. So we're through. 
And there you go, stroll out of the pit lane in 20th place. And now we can move him back down to... Yeah, take it easy. Cons uh, probably standard, actually. Balanced and let's harvest his energy. Um, yeah, Vettel's struggling a little bit to stay with these guys now. We think we can lean on the tyres more. Yeah, we're okay. You can stop lifting coast. Okay, right. Uh, now we're out of the dirty air of those guys. You can think about this strategy. So, how many laps does does a medium tyre last? 33 laps. Okay, so we've had them on 19 laps so far. 33 laps is what they can do. What can softs do? Brand new set of soft tyres. 24 laps. Um, okay. So we need to do another... Another fair few laps on these to be comfortable to the end. But yeah, we, we, we've just dropped off a little bit from that group. So let's uh, zoom it on a little bit and get into the pit window for, for Vettel. Oh, Not Ricardo one. went wide. Looks like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. Vettel's going to need to up the pace a little bit again. Sonoda's catching him. And a rate of knots. We don't want to get involved in that battle. There's more yellow flags, and that was Gasly. Yeah. Now. Let's go on neutral for him. So Vettel up the 13th. So we'll look at the gap to the leader. So we are going to be getting lapped soon. Um, not imminently, but will be at some point. We've got 23 laps to go. Hmm. Right. Again, I think we need to zoom on a little bit. I think Sonoda's going to get Vettel. Alpha Tower, he gained a place. So, if we can get to about lap 40, perhaps, with Vettel. Yeah, so let's go attack. Let's push a little bit and see where we can get to with this. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. So we did get That's past Sonoda the there. For Alpha Tauri. And so lap 40. Let's go one more lap, shall we? Right. So back to that. We'll attack them to the end. Hang on. Um, let's pit. Pit him in this lap. Onto the soft tyres. Let's go. We got to attack, I think. To have any chance in this race. Stroll in 19th, not really doing anything. Although Stroll has overtaken Latifi. Yellow flags, that's uh, Sonoda ran wide, I think. So we're coming into the pit lane now with Sebastian Vettel. Here we go. Copy that. So make sure you get your pit limiter, pit limiter as you come in the pit right, lane. Right, come on. Nice quick stop for these. Come on. Not bad. 2.825, that's very good. There's a Williams in the pit lane. Another yellow flag in sector three. So Vettel into clear air now. Who's running wide? And he has been lapped. So we're not going to go attack. We're going to go standard. 
Let's stick to balanced on that. And we're going to see how much Vettel can pull out here. Because other guys might not pit. Schumacher's in the pit lane. Where's Vettel going to come out compared to him? Not far behind. Not far behind. Latifi's in. Is Sonoda going to pit? Sonoda's not in the pits just yet. Leclerc and um, Verstappen are in. Perez leading the way ahead of Sainz. Yeah, lots of guys in the pit lane now. Like and we got Sainz locking up. And that's given uh, Verstappen a chance. So, ha yeah, Vettel's now right behind Sonoda. Sonoda must have come into the pit lane. So, let's see if Vettel can catch up to him yet. What tyres are people on? Yeah, onto the soft tyres. Okay. So Vettel's still on the lead lap as it stands, but uh, not sure we're going to get. Looks like Aston Martin have just Vettel's overtaken Ricardo. I'm not entirely sure how that happened. Was that in the pit lane? I suppose it must have been. I need to be careful with Ricardo here because he's right behind Verstappen. Oh, he's had to let Perez through. Now we're going to have to let Perez through. Yeah. Okay. And stroll up to 18th now ahead of both Williams cars. But uh, can Vettel stay in front of Daniel Ricardo? I think we're going to go aggressive. I'm going to push hard. And we're going to put that on overtake to try and get back past him. And now defend. We need to charge here. Copy. Yeah. More yellow flags. Who's Stand now gone on, off? That's a Gasly again. A and Alonso's ran wide. It just means there's been a lot Aston of Martin that today. Vettel's overtaken Ricardo once place. again. And it is yo-yo in with Daniel Ricciardo. Can we get that P14? That would be a very, very good result for us, I think. You know, we're a long way off points, but... We're not doing too badly here. So Vettel's back past Ricciardo. This is the issue. Ricciardo's just getting him on the... On the straight. Going to go back down to... Neutral. Got five laps to go here. Another yellow flag. Someone's run wide. And that was Lando Norris running right wide there, but Vettel through. And that's actually a pretty decent gap he's got. Yeah. Alright, let's push and put that on defend as well. No. Back through. Want to overtake. And we will watch the last couple of laps. To see if Vettel can get this done. He's back past now. Come on. This is ridiculous. So... This is the last lap we'll do on, on this camera. And then we'll head back. So Vettel very, very close. That's probably going to help him, if we're honest. So let's uh, run on board with our man Sebastian for the final two laps of this Grand Prix. What can he do here? We're going to push hard on the fuel. We're going to go attack on the soft tyres. He's got a chance here. And he is through. So Vettel back through on the penultimate lap of this race. There's three laps including this one. Three laps including this one. Okay. Now let's switch to the rear view. Ricardo closing back in. I think we want to harvest through this section of the track try 
and get a decent amount of of charge going. And then put it on to defend. But I don't think he's going to be able to cope here with Daniel Ricardo's DRS. He's closing right in. Although, to be fair, Vettel has held on valiantly. Nice harvest again. We just need to charge up. Yeah, copy. I'll try and charge up through these sections. Back on to neutral. As Charles Leclerc has entered his final lap of this Grand Prix, we're still ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Still got zero percent here. Put on defend. Oh, he's gone through. So I'll switch back to the onboard now. Can he? Can he get him here? Oh, and Lumen Lance Stroll has ran wide again. He better not lose that position uh, been a to Albon behind. Here comes Vettel. Now I'm going to go on neutral. We might get him here, you know, on this last lap. So this is last lap, last lap, you can push the tyres. So can we get past him on the next straight? This has got to be our chance. Right, overtake. Here we go. So we're happy to push the tyres hard now, push the tyres. Here we go, come on. Okay. Come on. DRS open. We're closing right in. This has got to be the chance. Come on. Come on. He's not going to make it. Well, wow, what a shame. Oh, we got to keep pushing. You never know what could happen here. We might as well deploy all of that. Push hard. Go aggressive. With Stroll. So, it looks like Leclerc. Leclerc has won. Charles Verstappen Leclerc second. Perez winner. third. Signs fourth. We're going to finish 15th in the end. No saving required. Well, there we go. We've come over the line. Let's uh, join Lance Stroll for the end of his last lap. It's been a bit of a shocker for him today. But Vettel, on pace, you know matching Daniel Ricciardo throughout that, that race there. Uh, we finished a decent gap behind um, Mick Schumacher in the end. You know, about eight seconds, but uh, some positive signs, I think, with, with race pace. But uh, definitely, Lance Stroll having a, a bad day at the office, it's, <laughs> it's fair to say. But, um, yeah, hopefully he can Put in his personal best on the, the last lap. It certainly looks like that's what he's about to do. Um, but yeah. Let's see what sort of time he can put in here. Best time of 137.1. Comes round the, the final corner. And can he put in his best lap of the race? Yes, he can. Very good. Very good. Okay, so... Um, Top 10, as you can see on the left. Uh, Zhou Guan Yu getting his first points there. Uh, Hamilton finishing 6th ahead of Russell in ninth. Alonso and Ocon up there as well. And there we go. We're all done. Sebastian Vettel with a comfortable result for his team here. Aston Martin had a good enough weekend, but there's still some margin for improvement here. Yes, this was a contrasted performance. But there were some good moments. There is promise here of great things down the line. With the race wrapped up, the team is ranked in ninth in the constructor standings. The teams now look ahead to the next round, where they'll duel it out in the sand dunes of Saudi Arabia. So there we have it then. Charles Leclerc wins the Bahrain Grand Prix. Ahead of Max Verstappen there in second. Sergio Perez third. Sainz fourth. Bottas fifth with Hamilton sixth. Alonso seventh. Ocon eighth. Russell ninth. And Zhou Guan Yu in tenth. Vettel finishes the race in fifteenth. And Magnussen... Uh, sorry, Stroll finishes eighteenth. Uh, don't, 
I don't know why I was talking about Magnuson particularly. Uh, let's have a look at the data view. We can look at the lab history of um, Sebastian Vettel, for, for instance. Um, well, I don't, oh, the, the, there were some flags, lots of yellow flags throughout the throughout the race, really. Um, but yeah, he did constantly put in personal bests, particularly towards the end, which was nice to see. So uh, good, consistent p pace from Vettel. Um, we had an outside chance of, of points, but uh, didn't really didn't really come to come to fruition right at the end, did it? But uh, fair enough. Well played to Sebastian Vettel, and hopefully, you know, we can get some points in the near future. Drivers' Championship, of course. Uh, is the race order, although it was um, Fernando Alonso that had the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Constructors wise, Ferrari lead the way ahead of Red Bull, Alfa Romeo are third, equal with Alpine, Mercedes only in fifth. The team's drivers gain experience over each race weekend, depending on their performance. With enough experience, your drivers will be able to improve their skills. Okay, so we need to um, keep an eye on that. We have gained some experience. Apparently, Lance Stroll has gained more than, than Vettel there. Um, and he has got slightly bigger growth potential. I think that's why. Okay, uh, so we gained 3.7 million off the sponsors, which has paid for some of our wind tunnel, which is fantastic. Congratulations on completing the first race weekend of the season. The team's outcome will have had an effect on board confidence levels. You can see their response in more detail in the board menu. But there's plenty of time for that to change over the season. OK. Take a look at what you can be doing before the next race weekend gets here. Our time is precious. And these moments between races are a good point to develop our team further. That right. suspension we installed before the race was really effective. And the design of the new car part is still in progress. You're pretty much ready to handle things yourself now. Our staff and facilities have a significant impact on the team's performance. When you get a chance, you should check these areas out on your own. If you ever find yourself needing any further information, don't forget you can use the help function for guidance. Okay, I need to head back over to aerodynamics. I'll be in touch again now and then. And I'm looking forward to the team thriving with you at the helm. Well, there you have it then. We are finished for our first Grand Prix of F1 Manager 2022. I really hope you've enjoyed that. I know it was a long one, but um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Hopefully you did too. Uh, make sure you hit the like button down below. It would be fantastic if we could hit 50 likes for this series. Make sure you subscribe for daily F1 Manager content. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.